Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy around here somewhere. This is the Zero Hour Edge Knife. Um, first off, though, I want to thank Zero Hour for sending this guy along. They reached out to me, and uh, they, they, they said, you know, hey Nick, we want a review. I said, well, sure, but it's going to be an honest review with the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. It might be a gem, it might be junk, you know, come on. And, and they said, you know what, that's fine. We'll take an honest review. They still send it along. That takes some stones, but I've tried not to let the fact that this was a review sample affect um, uh, the nature of my review. Full disclosure, though. Um, next thing, size comparison. Where the heck is that little guy? He said, oh, no, that's a... Oh, there it is. Okay, right here. <laughs> this is... Sorry, I can't resist. Um, This is a little tiny freaking knife. Here it is against the Ontario Rat Number 1 in D2 Steel, which is absolutely... um, Well, it dwarfs this little guy, mostly because this little guy's dwarfy. Um, right here is the Spydeco Delica. So the entire knife, when folded, can fit happily in the profile of the blade of the Delica, which is impressive. Um, Then here it is against your uh, steel wheel cut jack. Right here. Get everything in the frame here. I'm zoomed in a little bit. Um, so, again, not a huge knife. And then we'll compare it to some other relatively small knives right here. We have the um, uh, Spydeco Dragonfly right there, as well as... Oh, come on. Where are you at here? Uh, the Spydeco Ladybug right here. Perfect. And I think that ought to do it for relatively tiny freaking knives. So anyways, um, let's, uh, oh, and then two other things. This actually does come complete with a little branded carabiner and uh, beaded necklace for you to wear this guy as a neck knife. And then finally, there is no disassembly because I was unable to take this apart due to some thread locker issues. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. So on the good side, first off, I actually have to say this does work pretty well as a neck knife sort of an affair because uh, when it's on this little guy, although this is a little bit ridiculously large, this carabiner, um, I kind of would have expected something something more like a quick release or a kydex or something. It is very lightweight. There's really not much hanging out around your neck here. Um, right here we have a total weight. Oh, well, actually, I guess that works of 0.72 ounces. Um, and uh, you know what? Th th that's not really particularly heavy. I could wear this around all day long and not really feel it, um, and it would still be there. Although, at that point, it's more jewelry than anything because it's a little bit of a pain to get off the necklace, but whatever. Um, so that that's nice. Um, next thing, it does have a uh, removable clip on here. This little clip on here can be removed. If you can get these two screws out, it will absolutely pop out of there. And so you can, in theory, clip this to a very thin set of yoga pants or something like that. Um, and so th th that's good. Next thing, um, this is using, although it's using some kind of stupid proprietary screw on one side, it is just using boring torques on the other side. And so, um, although we'll talk about that later on, I do appreciate the fact that they did use a standard screw head, at least on one of the sides. Next thing, um, this is using a, an S35VN blade steel. S35VN is one of the better blade steels out there, and uh, considering that so often these little kind of novelty knives tend to be in very cheapy steels, you know, hey, why not, right? Um, and so, you know, th th there you go. That's a, a nice little thing. I suppose. Next thing, the carbon fiber on this is actually nice because you can see, A, it looks like real carbon fiber. I think it is actually real carbon fiber, and B, it's actually milled. I mean, you can see here that they've not just done, you know, a flat carbon fiber slab. No, they've gone through and they've added little kind of adorable little speed holes and a little milling and whatnot. I mean, they've put a little bit of effort into this, which is nice. Um, so often, you don't see that on these smaller knives. Um, so there you go. Next thing, this is uh, actually got pretty good lo uh, lock bar access. What I mean by that is, if you see here, there's this little cutout here, which allows easy access to the lock bar. So it's very straightforward, actually, to close this guy one-handed. It's a little bit of a process, you know, you, you get used to there, but absolutely you can close this guy one-handed, so that's nice. Um, This does have both a, uh, a flip -a tab and a thumb stud. I gotta be honest with you, getting the thumb stud to work is a little bit difficult because the detent is a little bit on the hard side, but particularly if I've got this mounted on the necklace, uh, so I take the necklace off and kind of use the, uh, the, the, the this carabiner to stabilize the rest of the knife, then I can get that thumb stud to work, so it gives you two options there. And finally, um, the flipper tab, although it's quite prominent here, actually works nicely as a blade guard, um, which means as you're cutting with this guy, you're not going to slide up onto the blade, which is kind of something I appreciate a little bit. And so um, th 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 that is always a nice secondary feature there. And so to me, all of that is the good, um, that it has the flipper tab blade guard on there, which actually isn't that much of a pocket pecker when you look at it from the other side here, although given you're not putting this in your pocket, likely. Um, it does have a thumb stud option. It has pretty decent lock bar access to close the guy. Um, it has a removable clip. It is lightweight, so it's fine as a neck knife. It's using S35VN, actual carbon fiber. It's got torques on one side. 
you know, there you go. So there you go. Um, on the great side, this guy is just freaking adorable. I mean, at some level, eh, come on. It's got these little tiny S35VN blade, little tiny carbon fiber scales, little tiny clip. I mean, oh, come on. How can you say no to this face? This is kind of cute. So um, little tiny speed holes even. At that level, this is just absolutely kind of hilarious and kind of adorable and a little bit cute. And so that itself might be something of interest for people. So I... Uh, that's the great, is that this is absolutely adorable and pretty entertaining as well. So the bad side to start with, this knife is just way too damn big. Wait, no, hold on, I'm sorry, old, old habits die hard there. Um, th this knife is too small, that's what I meant to say there. I mean, in, in all seriousness, this knife is pretty damn small. I mean, it's small to the point where it becomes difficult to manipulate. Like, all of my muscle memory for using a folding knife is is pretty much moot here, because unfortunately, well, it's it's doing its own thing here. Uh, and, you know, that that's fine, but it is something you're gonna want to keep in mind. Even I had underestimated seeing the pictures of it online, like, I thought this was way bigger than it actually was. And so, uh, it's a little bit on the tiny side. Keep that in mind. Um, one of the things that's kind of neutral is the price here. It's 55 bucks, and it's really hard to evaluate prices like this because, well, honestly, it's a unique thing. It's not like somebody is going to be sitting there going, okay, I, I can either get the steel wheel cut jack three inch, I can get the Spydeco Delica, or I can get the zero hour edge. No, this is a different thing fundamentally. It's sort of, yeah. And so I, I don't know how to evaluate the price of it. It feels maybe a little bit high, but it could be very okay if they make a couple of the tweaks I'm going to recommend here. So whatever it is, that's the price. Um, next thing, the clip on this guy is unfortunately not super functional. If you wear yoga pants, then maybe, 100%, but it just doesn't have enough ramp to get up onto pockets. I just, I felt like I had to kind of pull this guy up onto my pants if I wanted to wear it. And so as a result, I ended up carrying this guy almost exclusively as a neck knife. And uh, it comes with a neck chain, which is nice, and uh, makes this guy a lot more functional. But the thing is, this little carabiner unit is just not a great plan here. Because not only is it a little bit of a pain to get off of the thing, especially when this is hanging around your neck directly, um, but honestly... I yeah, getting it back on is not great, and I, yeah, I would have preferred to see something like a little Kydex sheath just kind of yank out, um, like they did with the Rye Hummingbird. I think that would have made it a little bit more functional as a neck knife kind of piece. But, uh, or some kind of quick release. Either way, the neck knife thing, although I certainly appreciate that they included that, um, didn't end up working out so super well. Next thing, this did not come sharp particularly. Um, we'll talk about the edge a little bit more in a bit here, but, um, it just out of the box, it is not super sharp. I mean, let's see, maybe it'll cut this fabric. Maybe. Ah, kind of, yeah. More tore the fabric than anything. Um, and so that's, that's just not great. And then finally, um, their website, their Kickstarter is a little bit absurd. Um, because, I quote, coming in at only 16 grams and two inches when closed, Edge is one of the lightest and smallest tactical pocket knives ever created. Now, look, that's completely ridiculous. How can they use the term tactical for this? But I know what you're thinking. Right now, angry comment is uh, typing away. But neck, 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 tactical pocket knife refers to any modern folding knife. Okay, I give you that. But then I, I, I quote again. With zero hour edge, you'll be prepared for obstacles as simple as removing packing tape or as tough as stopping an imminent threat. Okay. So these guys are picturing me standing on the freaking Serengeti with a rhino charging at me, pulling out my zero hour and preparing to go on the attack. What the hell are you guys thinking? Like, calm your marketers down a little bit. I do not know what tactics you engage in, but just know. By the time you have this guy off the neck chain, you will be long dead in an imminent threat situation. This kind of over-the-top tactical marketing is just like why we can't have nice things. Guys, it's a cute little knife. Just freaking say it that way. You don't need to drink the tactical Kool-Aid. But anyways, so those are the bad things to me, is that they have heavy hitting the tactical Kool-Aid in their marketing materials. Materials. It did not come sharp. The keychain, I'm sorry, the neck chain would be better with some kind of a quick release, a Kydex. The clip isn't really functional. The price is hard to compare to anything, but maybe a little high. And it is way too damn big. I'm sorry, habit, really, really small. On the ugly side, there are a couple of ugly issues here. First off, as you're seeing repeatedly here, the detent just isn't quite hard enough. It needs some wrist, and that's kind of hard to give in a knife this small. Um, this is not a normal wristing motion. I mean, I can get it to deploy reliably by putting a lot of force into it with my arm here, but it, it doesn't super well work. And if I just flip it without that, even trying everything I can to preload it, 
we only get to about here. And maybe this is the case that, you know, I could adjust it and, you know, get in there and tune everything so it works perfectly. But the problem is, unfortunately, this has free spinning screws and it's thread locked shut. And given that they're using a stupid proprietary fastener on the other side, it was impossible for me to actually get in there and, uh, you know, uh, try and tune this at all. I did my best to lubricate, but it just didn't, it's not working. It's not happening. And so, unfortunately, with in terms of a flipper, this isn't a great flipper. Uh, and that's that's kind of disappointing. And then finally, and the, the ugliest thing by a mile here, is that the blade on this guy, it, the, the grind is just not very good. What you can see here, I mean, seriously, let's look at the ed, the tip of this knife. And I'm going to compare this right here to, for instance, the tip of the Spyderco Delica. That's completely freaking ridiculous. This knife is, I mean, if we look at these edgewise, you can barely see the edge on the Delica. Eh, maybe it's hard to see in this case. But look, this is super, super thick behind the edge. And it makes sense because they're using blade stock that is this thick on a blade that is this short. I mean, this is just not a very good cutting tool. It just, it basically doesn't cut. Um, I've used it on some clamshell packaging and it sucked. I mean, it, you can kind of force it in there and then you can kind of tear it through, but I feel like I could probably do the same thing with a metal ruler that's not sharpened or anything like that. And similarly, you can force this guy through cardboard, but it's just not pretty. And so unfortunately, with the grind on this guy being what is it, what it is here, this just doesn't cut very well and it doesn't even really poke very well. I mean, sure, you could stab this at something and it would probably puncture but it just it sucks in that way and so unfortunately this is just not a blade that's meant to cut anything uh, and that's that's pretty ugly and so to me those are the ugly things is that the, the grind is super freaking thick it is thread locked shut and it, the detent isn't hard enough for you to deploy this guy without using a fair amount of wrist um and so let's go to the final conclusion and for me that conclusion is that well this is a cute little novelty it is a cute little knife that you get for a knife geek in your life so you, you hand it to him and you say see i got your and it's 35 VN flipper. And everybody has a little laugh. And then they carry it around rarely. They show it off to friends. Then they have a little good laugh. In my case, I can bust it out anytime I need my hands to actually look large. I mean, that, that, it's useful. But the thing is, you're not buying a knife in those situations. You're buying a prop. You're buying something for comedic effect. Because I feel like that's where this is happy. Because as it's done right now, it's not really a super functional knife. The detent just isn't quite hard enough. The deployment isn't quite easy enough. And it's just not meant to cut. The edge and the tip are just too damn thick. If they really reground this hard and tried to knock that thickness down, they could make this into something that is functional, that is very small and yet able to cut but as at the moment, it's just, it's not happening. So this could be fixed. I mean, tune the detent, grind the blade more aggressively, and then you'd get something more compelling, and you'd give people a reason to buy it outside comedy. But as it is, unfortunately, that's kind of where it's at, is comedy. Because if you want a tiny functional knife, you've got other options. There's always a little Victorinox Classic for like 16 bucks. No freaking problem there. The Spyderco Ladybug and Manbug are around the same price, but are actually very solid cutting tools because they're using, well, about the same thickness of blade stock, actually a little bit thinner, but they're using a much more aggressive grind. They're using a much taller grind. And so these knives actually cut, even though they're about the same size there. And the Reich Hummingbird, which uh, is a great little choice. It's three times the price, but it's 20 times the knife with really great action, great machining, great cutting power, and great materials. Um, The, the Reich Hummingbird is a high-end knife that happens to be tiny, whereas this guy is a tiny knife that isn't all that high-end. And so... Like I said, the knife could be substantially improved for everyday carry with a couple of small tweaks to the grind and the detent. But as it stands, like I said, this is a knife that you buy because it's cute and because it's funny and it's entertaining. And so if it's worth the price for you for that particular thing, then I think it could absolutely be zero hour for ordering this guy. But otherwise, I think you can probably go on ahead and uh, pass on this one. So there you go. Hope this is interesting to you and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.